Anyway, let's discuss about the owner limits, which is another most important interview question for Salesforce testing. Let's start. So let's see one real time example, which is scenario. So here comes the scenario one. For example, if we are having a hostel or a PG, right? the paying is where a few of the people will be staying over there, right? And we will be having three uh, times meal, like breakfast, we will have lunch, dinner, and the meal in a hostel or a PG is a shared resource, right? So who all are staying in the PG or the hostel will have access to that meals, right? Just imagine if you're in a college hostel and if only first seniors will have access to those meals. So uh, there's a rule like only first seniors should enter into that meal section okay and get those meals then for example seniors even they bring their friends from outside and give access to those meals then those meals can get completed right even before the freshers get access to those meals those meals will be completed if there is no limit imposed on those meals okay so this is one best real-time example okay so that's why in the hostel or pg also a limit will be imposed actually like if our if anyone from outside want to come and get access to those meals from the hostel then either they have to pay for it or they are not even allowed at all, right? That is one limit which is imposed on a meal. Also for the existing members also in the hostel, like who are already staying in the hostel or paying for the hostel or for the meals, even it's not like they can get unlimited meals, right? Like even uh, like they will waste one plate of food and they can go ahead and get two to three plates at a time. No, it's not actually. Even they will have a limit imposed on them, like at a time they can at max take only two plates of food, which is being being served right so such limits are available everywhere because these are shared resources so shared resources means everyone should have equal opportunity to utilize those resources right so similarly salesforce also imposed governor limits on its organizations now coming to salesforce salesforce is a multi-tenant architecture right now here what is a multi-tenant tenant means what tenant means organization multi-tenant means what multiple organizations so on salesforce multiple organizations will be using the same set of resources shared resources like the member memory like the database everything okay like the applications a common applications which they can go ahead and customize on their own so if a limit is not imposed on them and if only one particular organization is continuously using those resources then obviously other organizations will not have access to those resources right then why those other organizations want to pay to salesforce and stay with salesforce right so that's why salesforce imposed few limits on usage of resources for the organizations these limits are only called as governor limits okay now to understand more let's look into a scenario two which is another real-time example okay now here scenario two is what like uh, when we are small even now also like uh, for example if you're a 90s kid then you're very much aware of the game Ma uh, mario right so uh, when we are like uh, as a kid we used to play a lot this mario game right so they will be like a, a player one and player two so just imagine if like you have a siblings and uh, like your first sibling like he or she is continuously playing that game and you're not even getting a chance to play that game right even like a second player so that is the thing right so continuously your sister or a brother is only playing that game you're not even getting a chance to play that game so you'll get so much angry right so this is another real-time example actually so a limit should be imposed like for example like our parents will uh, like if we are fighting with our siblings to play this game then our parents will import a limit on us right like first our sister or a brother uh like they will play just for like half an hour for example then we will get a chance to play for next half an hour so overall we both should play only for one hour and we both should decide like who will play when okay so this is another set of real-time example uh, and the limit which is imposed to play games on siblings right now let's look into another real-time example which now let's look into another real-time example actually so if you guys have been using sql queries writing on the database then you can very much relate to this example so yeah in database while writing an X SQL query. So you guys know, right? We will be writing something called as no log in parentheses inside the brackets. We will be specifically writing no log. 
inside the SQL queries. Why? Because if uh, that particular query, if you're running for, if it's running for like more than five to ten minutes, then like if you're not writing this particular word, then you're locking that particular table, right? So that others cannot even read the data from that particular table because that table has been locked by your username it's running for more than 10 minutes so it's a big issue so that's why what we will do actually while writing a sql query also we will like introduce this no lock word actually inside the query so that even though your query is uh, trying to retrieve the data for more than 10 minutes for it's running for a long time but still that table will not be logged by you still the other users who are trying to run the same table they should be able to get the data the database should be able to read the data from the same table at a time concurrently and should be able to display the results to them because of this single word no lock right so in real time also you got it right so we are not locking the resources right for other users so this is very important guys like whenever there are shared resources it's not like only one person will go ahead and utilize all the resources and other persons even though they are paying for the same resources if still they are not able to use then what is the purpose actually the customers will be very much disappointed and they will uh, actually leave the contract right so that is why governor limits have been imposed by salesforce on the organizations for the shared resources they are using okay now we will this is completely about the governor limits on salesforce that's it guys that's it so simple okay now just look into like what are all the governor limits available on salesforce okay so you can i suggest you can simply explore in the online actually like just search with the governor limits like in the online only like we have multiple good amount of resources available on this governor limits so i really suggest you guys to explore all the details available online okay so i just opened one set of such good resource okay online so you can see here right like i felt this uh, diagram really fascinating to explain to you guys see so types of governor limits so we have uh, per transaction apex limits per transaction certified managed package limits static apex limits lightning platform apex limits size specific apex, apex limits okay so that's it guys these are the types of uh, governor limits available on salesforce right so mainly these will target the memory the database kind of resources like for example if any apex code is being run by one organization then if it's that code is being run for a long time then that code is utilizing all the resources right like other organizations is not able to utilize those resources only right so that's why if you can see all the limits are actually related to the apex limits only apex code only okay and uh, like it's related to the SOQL queries also. Okay, so here you can see, right? Like SOQL, few other like uh, good amount. See, SOQL 100 limit is there. Like uh, can only have 100 select statements per Apex transaction. Okay, so I seriously suggest you guys to go to such kind of good amount of online resources to understand more in detail what are the governor limits, types of governor limits available on Salesforce. So that's it guys. This is all about governor limits on Salesforce with good amount of real time examples. I hope you guys found this video really helpful. Thank you so much guys for watching this video.